Hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? It is Friday. Yay, yay, it's Friday. Oh, it's been, this week has gone by so fast, though, for me. I uh, hope you've had an awesome week. We are going to be talking about Psalm 26 tonight. And uh, just kind of still diving into Psalms. I really like them a lot. It's probably all I'm going to do tonight and uh, do my share. I thought I had this up a while ago. Uh, I thought I was actually ready at 7, but anyway. I'm ready now. So I want to share with you what I wrote about this song that I just heard today. So, so many great new songs out. It seems like everybody's doing an album at the same time, so it's really hard to keep up with. All right, well, let's pray. Let's pray to God. And my focus prayer today is that all generations in our nation feel the love of God and say, send me. Um, yeah, that they would feel the love of God and say, send me. Okay, well, let's pray. God, we just thank you for all the many blessings that you have given us, God. We know, God, that you are on your throne and you are in control. And there is no God like you. You are the great Jehovah. You are the great I am. You are our everlasting Father. Thank you for being our creator, our sustainer, our provider, our protector. Thank you for being our shelter in the storm. Thank you, God, for always being with us, for giving us strength and refuge. God, you are miraculous and mighty and powerful. You are the righteous judge that will judge all unrighteousness. And you are caring and loving and kind and compassionate, God. You are faithful. You are trustworthy. And you are patient, God. You want none to perish. Thank you for loving us, God. Thank you for calling us as your children. Thank you for giving us a calling in your kingdom. Uh, we love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. God, we just pray for the lost. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so that they can be saved. We pray for the prodigals to remember the relationship that they once had with you and to return and to repent, God, and to be reconciled. We pray for all these disasters. I was listening to the La Palma eruption stuff about that this afternoon. God, how tragic. Please be with these people. Please protect them. Please meet their needs with the hands and feet of Jesus. God, and all the other disasters too, because there are so many. There are so many everywhere, God. We just pray that you would meet the needs of these people, that they would feel your presence that they would feel your closeness, that they would feel your love, God, and that people would come to their rescue, God, and be the hands and feet of Jesus, the loving compassion of Jesus. God, we pray for the people in Afghanistan. We just pray, God, that you would be with them. And we pray for these Haitians that are coming, God, that, that they are not coming here for ill will, that they are coming to find a new way, that they will... Um, be productive citizens, God. We just pray, God, for protection for our country. And we pray that our country would feel your love, God, and feel your presence. And that, God, they would, they would become your children. And they would say, send me, God, send me. Send me to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Send me to be the loving compassion of Jesus. Send me to be the arms of Jesus. God, just send us. Send us. God, we just also pray for people that are sick today, God. 
There are so many that pop up in my mind, God, that are sick. We just pray that you would heal them, God. That you would be with them, that they would feel your presence, that their families, that um, through you, their families would be strengthened, God. We just pray for a restorative healing for all of these, God. We praise you for their recovery so far. We pray, God, for all the people that have lost loved ones. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength, God. We just pray that they would feel your presence in the absence of their loved one. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, amen. All right, well, I'm going to read this first. And then we'll read Psalm 26. I should have gotten me more water, but I am very, um, I don't know. My eye was itching last night. My eye continued to itch last night. Today, my throat is itching a bit. Um, there's something outside that I am not liking right now. And, uh, I'm taking allergy medicine. And so that just kind of dries your throat. It dries everything up. All right, so this is what I wrote, and I do recommend that you go and listen to this song. I shared it some time ago. Just go to my site and listen to it. Wow, what a beautiful song and message by Jen Johnson and Chris. I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. Quiaya, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Leela, I've, I've heard this last name pronounced, but if I mess it up, I'm sorry. It's called Send Me. So day 19, I'm on day 19 for pray, praying for our nation, praying for all generations in our nation to feel the love of God and say, send me. We are called to love God, walk in his truth, follow Jesus and be the hands, feet, love, and compassion of Jesus. Love needs to supersede the hate that we see. There is so much hate right now. And love needs to supersede that. I don't know how we got to this point of disunity in this nation and all over the world. I, I mean, the only thing I can think of is and also, what happened to agreeing to disagree? I even do that with my husband. Sometimes we don't agree about everything. But it's okay. We agree about the most important things. Um, I believe God and his truths have been shut out of people's lives for generations. I do. I believe it's been a generation after generation after generation of shutting God out of people's lives. And that is why we see rampant drug, alcohol, addiction, evil, and lies being traded for truth. Because we do have lies being traded for truth, perpetrating our youngest children up to the oldest adult. There are lies being traded for truth. Sin is destroying this world, but Jesus is the good news for all. Jesus, Jesus is the good news. He can break the addictions of alcohol. He can break the addictions of drugs. He can break the addictions of evil sin that people have in their lives. He can do that. God sent Jesus to die for us all. Jesus died so we don't have to live with sin in our lives. We can repent, which means turn away, turn from our sins, and continue on this journey following Jesus. God gives us free will to choose. He does. Choose Jesus today. He is the only path to God. Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin. Time is short. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. John 3, 16 through 21. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today.
God wants none to perish. He does not. He doesn't want us stuck in our sin. He wants so much better for us than what even we know that we deserve. Okay, so here is Psalm 26. And in looking for a an image with Psalm 26 on it, I found some really good scriptures that were in the images. So Psalm 26 is called A Prayer for Divine Scrutiny and Redemption. We talked about that. We talked about repenting of our sins, being redeemed. Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity. I have also trusted in the Lord. I shall not slip. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my mind and my heart, for your loving kindness is before my eyes. And I have walked in your truth. I have not sat with the idolatrous mortals, nor will I go in with the with hypocrites. I have hated the assembly of evildoers and will not sit with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence. So I will go about your altar, O Lord, that I may proclaim with the voice of thanksgiving and tell all of your wondrous works. Lord, I have loved the habitation of your house in the place where your glory dwells. Do not gather my soul with sinners nor my life with bloodthirsty men, in whose hands is a sinister scheme, in whose right hand is full of bribes. But as for me, I will walk in my integrity. Redeem me and be merciful to me. My foot stands in an even place. In the congregations, I will bless the Lord. So, this is a Psalm of David. And he's asking God to examine his mind and his heart. For your loving kindness is before my eyes. And I have walked in your truth. We need to walk in God's truth. And that is really hard these days. Because acceptance has gotten to be a big word. That, oh, you don't accept me as I am. One may accept you as you are. But I know that sin is separating you from God. And I care more about you and your soul and your relationship with God than to accept things that things of sin that God does not approve of. You see, we have a holy God. And he has not changed his mind about sin. And no one has changed the Bible. I have old Bibles that were written before 1960. They all say exactly the same thing. You can go online. You can find an old Bible. It says exactly the same thing. Maybe different words, but exactly the same thing as it says now. God sees sin as sin. And God hates sin. But God loves the sinner. God loves everyone, but he does not love our sin. He does not accept our sin because he knows that we can do so much better than to settle for living in sin. He knows we can. David was a sinner. David sinned a lot. He did. But God love David and David would repent of his sins we have to repent of our sins we can't live in our sins so oh I don't have a don't have a study part on Psalm 26 So, you know, we can love sinners, but it says, do not gather my soul with sinners, nor my life with bloodthirsty men, in whose hand is a sinister scheme, in whose right hand is full of bribes. Wow, that is so true these days. 
how many people do you think are taking bribes? In our judicial system, in our government, you know, from the very top to the very bottom, how many people do you think are on the take? Now my nose itches. Like I said, I'm having a face itch time. I don't know what I have come in contact with. Anyway, all right, so that is all I want to read. And this may be a short night because I really don't feel read to, I don't feel led to read anything else. I'm trying to think if I read anything today in my Bible study. Don't know. But I do know that forgiveness, God's forgiveness is available to everyone. You do have to ask him for forgiveness. So let's see, what do we want to do? No. read this because I have more time. Eternal life. Kind of tiny though. God wants you to be sure. The Bible says, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. 1 John 5 13. Another question is to consider is suppose you were standing before God right now and he asked you, why should I let you into my heaven? What do you think you would say? You may not know what you would say, but you can know because God loves you and has a purpose for your life. The Bible states it this way, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. John 3.16 God's purpose is that we have eternal life. We receive eternal life as a free gift. The gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 6.23 We can live a full and meaningful life right now. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. John 10.10 10. We will spend eternity with Jesus in heaven. I go and prepare a place for you. I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. John 14.3 Eternal life gives meaning to life, yet our sinful nature keeps us from fulfilling God's purpose for our lives. Thus, our need is to understand our problem. We are all sinners by nature and by choice. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 We cannot save ourselves, not by works, so that no one can boast. Ephesians 2 9. We deserve death and hell. The wages of sin is death. Romans 6 23. Sorry, my eyes itching on this side now. It is true that God is holy and just and must punish sin, yet He loves us and has provided forgiveness for our sin. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The good news is that God has provided for the forgiveness of our sins. God's provision is Jesus Christ. 
Jesus is God and became man. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. Jesus died for us. Oh, excuse me. Jesus died for us on the cross, for Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive by the Spirit. 1 Peter 3.18 Jesus was resurrected from the dead. He was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. Romans 4.25 That is the good news, but the only way Jesus can affect our lives is for us to receive him. The Bible says, yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. John 1, 12. The choice is ours. Thus, our response is to receive Jesus. We must repent of our sin. We talked about repentance and what repenting was. Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. Acts 3.19. Repentance is not just feeling sorry for our sin. They should repent and turn to God and prove their repentance by their deeds. Acts 26.20. Repentance is turning to God through Jesus and away from our sin. It's like making a U-turn. You're going this way and then you turn all the way around and you go back. As we turn, we must place our faith in Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith and this not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. Ephesians 2, 8. Faith is not just believing facts about Jesus. You believe that there is one God, good. Even the demons believe that and shudder, James 2.19. Faith is trusting in Jesus. It's like taking a trip on an airplane. You will never take the trip until you trust the plane enough to board it. Three important questions. Does what you have been reading make sense to you? Is there any reason you would not be willing to receive God's gift of eternal life? Are you willing to place your faith in Jesus right now and turn from your sin? The Bible says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Romans 10, 13 You need to ask the Lord Jesus to save you. Read this prayer and see if it says what you want to say to God. All right, if you want to accept Jesus as your Savior right now, now is the time of salvation. Please don't continue to wait. So just repeat these words after me, and I will leave a space so you can repeat them after me. Dear God, I know that Jesus is your Son and that he died on the cross and was raised from the dead. I know I have sinned and need forgiveness. I am willing to turn from my sins and receive Jesus as my Savior and Lord. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Oh, amen. My little buddy came in here with me and he said, amen. Good job, Seth. Call on the Lord in repentance and faith using these similar words of your own. And Jesus will become your Savior and Lord. Welcome to the family of God. If you sincerely prayed this prayer, you have just made the most important decision of your life. You can be sure you are saved and have eternal life. As you begin your new journey, and it is a journey, it is not a, ooh, 
My life is perfect now. It's a journey. It is important to realize that Jesus wants to do more than just reside in your life. He wants to be Lord of your life. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. Romans 10, 9 through 10. Confessing Jesus is Lord is more than just words. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Matthew seven twenty one. Confessing Jesus as Lord means trusting him to direct our lives. Trusting Jesus to direct our lives is like driving down the highway with another person. As long as you are driving, you are in charge. If you realize you don't know the way, but the other person does, you might say, you take the wheel and drive. Then the other person is in charge. And the two of you, two of you take the route he or she chooses. As evidence of confessing Jesus as Lord, you will want to identify with him. The New Testament way of identification is to confess Jesus publicly, mm-hmm. Matthew 10, 32 through 33, and to follow him in baptism and church mm-hmm. membership, Acts two forty one. So your assurance, you know you have eternal life because God keeps his promises. You repented of your sin, Acts three nineteen. You placed your faith in Jesus, Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. God heard your prayer for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Romans 10, 13. God recorded your commitment. Rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Luke 10, 20. You need to grow as a Christian. The Bible calls new Christians babes in Christ. 1 Corinthians 3, 1. Without certain essentials, babies will not develop normally. The church is to a new Christian what the home and family are to a baby. You identify with your new family by confessing Jesus publicly and by experiencing believers' baptism. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. Acts 2.41 Attend church Sunday and share with the pastor that you want to be baptized and become a member of the church. Praying is to spiritual life what breathing is to physical life. Breathing must be regular and continuous. The Bible says pray continually, 1 Thessalonians 5.17. Learn to be specific in your praying. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1, 9. God's word is to new Christians what good food is to a baby. Good food is a daily requirement for proper growth. Like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. 1 Peter 2, 2. The best time for daily prayer and Bible reading is my favorite time is in the mornings but if you if you said this prayer then welcome to the kingdom family of god you are now saved sealed and sanctified by god through jesus his son and it is time for me to do god's blessing in number 6 24 through 26 and i need to go get my child something to eat That's why he's in here. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. I hope you have an awesome, peaceful night. I'm going to do a really short prayer. I'm going to pray for families and friends. Excuse me that my nose itches. At least it's not my eye tonight. 
God, we just come to you and we just thank you for all the things that you do for us, God. We just, we thank you for family and we thank you for friends, God. And we just pray that you would protect our family and friends, God, that you would bless our family and friends, mm -hmm. that you would provide for them, that you would lead and guide them, God, that the Holy Spirit would lead their way, that they would follow Jesus, God. And if they don't know Jesus, that the Holy Spirit would draw them to Jesus so they would be saved. God, we pray for boldness for you to send us, God, to share your truths and to share the gospel of Jesus anywhere that we go. Help us to be the hands and feet of Jesus, the loving compassion of Jesus, and when needed, the arms of Jesus, God. Just help us to be your children, to be the children that you can be proud of. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mm. All right. Well, that was kind of a blanket prayer for everyone. Anyone that comes mm. on here, anybody's friends or family. I know a lot of people are sick. I prayed about that earlier. And uh, I just pray for continued healing for people too. So have an awesome rest of your night in an awesome tomorrow, which is Saturday, and much love, and cyber hugs, till I see you again, good night.